So today, I'm going to start shaping the blade. It's the, it's the most fun part. And I'm a little apprehensive. I don't know why. I guess I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up. And the very first thing I do is work on this complex section where the shoulder is. I've got a nice Japanese chisel here. I can't read the maker's mark because it's not in the character set I know. I have my trust tool spoke shave and I, sh I just sharpened it. And it's, I now know that it's made by, by record or record, I'm not sure which. You can see that right in there. It's never looked before. And uh, the microplaning rasp, whatever it's called. Microplane, there. So we'll give it a shot, see what happens. You can probably see how on this face I've put in pencil marks. This is all the wood that I have to remove. It's probably a little harder to see, but now you can see it on the top also. This has to be removed. And I think I'm going to start here, just to see how it goes with the rasp. As expected, the rasp was leaving a pretty nasty rough surface, but who cares? It's going to be sanded anyhow later on. I'm just trying to remove a lot of wood right now and carefully. That's probably good enough for now. I'm going to get a feel for the tool, feel for what it's like. When I cut, actually there's more that needs to come. I'll do more. I'll do more later. Uh, when this is all said and done, this will now be an octagon, but of course we'll be rounding it down to a, an oval shape for most paddles. I believe this one is set to be circular. But Okay. I barely know what I'm doing here. Right. Interesting, the camera's where I want to be. That's working out really nicely. You can see how flat that is, as opposed to this rough stuff here. I like this. I like this chisel. Right here, I'm getting to the line. Got to be a little careful here.
so nice. This is a, a Lee Nielsen plane, which I believe is made in Maine. I hope I'm right, probably am, I don't know. They, they still make them today, much like the, like the Wrecker ones and Veritas. Uh, the website talks about how they're heirloom quality, and I'm really proud that my father-in-law let me you know, <laughs> use this one. It's always intimidated me. I really should have been using it earlier on instead of my Stanley, but I felt comfortable with my Stanley. And I realize now there's not much planing left to do. It should be all spoke shaving or draw knife, but I'm not using a draw knife. But I figured I just wanted to give it a shot. So I sharpened it up and let's see how it goes. It's making really thin cuts because I'm working the edge. I'm not rotating it enough this way. I'm cutting far more towards this line, which is really close versus that line, which is really far away. So I gotta start rolling it more. I might just stop using this for now. I'm, I'm not liking the weight of it. And it could be because I think this is now rotated wrong. I, had, I wanted it this way vertically to get that complex corner at least roughed in. I think I'm gonna rotate it down. Piece is rotated. I wanna try this because I think it's actually gonna work out well. I, I don't like the weight of it. I don't like, oh, I should get that little tiny plane out. That's what I'll get. Remember this one from last time? Stanley 110. I like this little one. It's way lighter than that. And what I wasn't liking about that was, of course, I had good control. I didn't have good visibility. Spoke shape is best, but this takes off large. I can do full length runs with this. So I'm gonna put this away over here. So a lot of that fancy footwork I had to do here at the chisel, so of course I'm just erasing it. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I'll just keep a careful watch on this section. Ken talks about it in the book, and it's probably not clear because I'm also not doing a good job of it. You have to be rolling the plane. So here, I'm at an angle like this, and down here, I'm at an angle like that. I'm rolling the plane as I turn it. Again, much easier to do with a smaller plane. Down here, I'm actually at the line on this side. I'm not on the line. I gotta be really careful to be rolling it more when I get down there. I switch to this. Oh, I don't like this as much.
So I have it out to this line, or about here down, I have it to this line here down. And Brian mentions in the book that you gotta feel it. I can feel there's a high spot here, high spot there. So you, you gotta use your, not just measuring, you, just, you gotta get a feel for the wood. Done for about here out. So I met this line. Oh, I should rotate that. So I've met this line here mostly. From here down it's met. I got a little bit here and I've met this line mostly. But it's got a definite bow to it. It's bulging. It's very, very proud. Because I've been doing this, I've been doing that. So next I gotta go in and get that. Careful not to overrun my lines. I declare this side done. I declare oh, that side's really done also. I gotta take down the wood between. Oak shape there. Oh yeah, that's the tool here now.
that's the right tool. I still need to get more off in here. It's way easier when I'm not trying to work over the camera. Sorry, you don't get to see it. Okay, that's nice. Let's get this over to the bench and look at it. Well, I was very apprehensive about that. I'm not sure why. I was, I was just didn't want to start this morning. But it went better than I, well, feared it would fail, I guess. I don't know. Of course, I've done this before, and this is the part I like the most. So it was a weird, weird emotions I felt. But let's look at it. You can see here. Let's see how the shoulder is there. That's what I was working on at the very end with the chisel, in the beginning with the chisel, of course. Let's see how it comes down to a thin line there. You can see I crossed the line a few times here and here, but as, as Brian points out, it's not a big deal. It's all gonna be, it's gonna be come out in the sandpaper stage. And you can see here, uh, smash that, and I make it down to there, and the lines are back good. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight sides to do. I'm not going to video the next seven. And that gives me the opportunity to put the air conditioner back on. I'm dying down here. Yeah, my basement's air conditioned. Isn't that great? It, it doesn't keep it cool, but it takes some of the, the heat out. And I'm dying. <laughs> okay, we'll upload this later. And if I find something fun, I'll show you. Well, the problem is actually worse than I thought, and it makes you just want to throw the paddle, but I'm not gonna. What's going on here is this side's correct. I have, from my center line, I got 5 eighths of an inch going out, 5 eighths of an inch. It's correct down to about here. And for whatever reason down here, the whole thing got shifted. So I've got 6 eighths on this side and only four eighths, one half an inch outside. So this is going to be an eighth of an inch too thin on a gradual taper from here down to there. And that's on a, a pretty critical part of the blade, the loom. But I'm, I'm just going to go for it. I'll shave this down because this is, this is high. I'll gradually reduce this so it's five eighths from the center all, all along this part. And this part is just going to remain too short and it's, the blade's gonna be asymmetrical. I'm not happy about it, but hey, there's more wood, right? Well, I figured out why. I gotta look at this side, which I've not done any rasping on, any rounding. I can see my lines are absolutely correct, you know, 5 eighths, and up here, you can see that it dipped into the line, and when I sight down It'll be very hard to see on the video, but when I sight down it, I can see that my saw blade was bending in. So I just, I, I lost the line here, I crossed too deep, and it bent. So this is gonna be strength compromised. I don't know how much, but I'm sure it'll be fine for paddling, but probably not for using to get in and out of the boat. Oh well, we'll see how it goes. Well, I mostly corrected it. <laughs> too loud. Well, I mostly corrected it. <laughs> I'll get turn that down. <laughs> well, I mostly corrected it. It's you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's good. I'm, I I should have videoed it because I started using the rasp and it was going so slow. And I actually used the spoke shape and just got down what I needed. And we'll see how it goes. Drew new pencil lines and I'm ready to. And I 
started rounding the whole thing off. Remember, I, I did just a tiny bit before because it was in the clamp a whole lot. Well, here, with this all exposed, it's really easy to start rounding this off. So I'll just show you how that, how that works. I just hold this at a 45 degree angle. I'm just doing that to make it smooth, that's all, so I can reduce the likelihood of splinters. That's all that took. At least something went well. Actually, the, the shaping went well also. Since this whole video series seems to be about making mistakes, I, I made a mistake when I, I shaped the first blade. Not a bad mistake. I just used the wrong tool. Remember I was using the, uh, the little 110 plane? Well, I started doing this side and I just reached for the spoke shave because that's what I did on my first paddle. And I completely forgot that existed. And this is the right tool. Whereas that's really kind of nice. I have such great control over this. And I think partly before when I was using it, I wasn't happy with it because I, I was working for the camera the right way to do it is, of course, to be at the end. And they actually make special spoke shave and draw knife chairs where you can just have the piece you're drawing towards you. And it just is really nice. See? That's all you have to do.